Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18 has been out for a little while to developers and now it's out to public beta testers. So I wanted to give you 18 tips and features to try if you're just using it now and there may be some things in here you weren't aware of. Now the first thing has to do with your widgets. These are much easier to use this time around as you don't have to delete and edit them and then re-add them to change the overall size press and hold on your widget and you have different size options here. If I want to make a larger one, I can do that. It auto resizes everything, press and hold, resize it back down to a smaller size or even resize it down to the app itself. This works on any app that actually has a widget. So if we switch back, you may have to rearrange some of your things and your icons back to where they were, but if it actually has a widget built in and there's a widget for it, you can switch it to a widget just by pressing and holding. Another feature you may have been wanting for a long time is here with iOS 18 and you can now lock and then hide some of your apps. So if we press and hold on final cut camera, we can require face ID. Now it says hide and require face ID, or you can just lock it by requiring face ID. If we hide it, it scans for face ID and then actually says, do you want to hide it? It will obscure the app appearance and there'll be no notifications, calls or alerts for this specific app. So if we hide the app, it goes away. Then we can do that with something else, maybe this mail app, but you won't necessarily get the option to hide the app depending on what the app is. This is of course up to the app developer, an email app you wouldn't necessarily want to hide so you can choose not to do that or just lock the app in general, depending on what the actual app is, maybe the fitness app here. Again, we can do the same thing, require face ID, but it won't ask me to actually hide the app. Now, if we go over into our app library and we go to the bottom, you can look through here, even under final cut, and you actually won't see your app at all. But if you cancel and scroll all the way to the bottom, you have a hidden folder. Now tap on the hidden folder. It will scan for face ID. Then you can see your app. If you want to unhide it, press and hold and tap on don't require face ID. Then it will allow it to unhide and now you can go and use it again. So it doesn't appear back on the screen. You had it on. You'll have to go re add it. But if you go back into your app library and find where it was, you'll see that it actually shows back up now. And then you can just drag and drop it into any place where you had it before. Within the calendar app, Apple has updated it with some new views and there's an easier way to access these views. One, you can just tap at the top here and go to compact stacked details or list, or you can just pinch into the calendar itself or pinch back out to change the overall view size. So if you want to do that, you can go all the way out or back in. If you want the list view though, you'll actually have to specifically select that but this is a great way just to sort of go between different view sizes here within calendar. Now within Safari, we actually have hints of Apple intelligence, but it's not here just yet, at least at the time of this video. And if we go in and I just did a quick search for iPhone 15 pro max reviews, and I tapped the first one, you'll see here that we have a little star near the reader icon tap on this and it gives us a little summary here. So we of course can go into the reader, but it actually gives us a summary of the article. This isn't working on every single option. So if I go into the Apple insider option here, you'll see that it's not there in that article. And if I scroll down and just keep picking different ones, sometimes it's there. Sometimes it's not as we scroll through these. So if we go into phone arenas review, it actually gives us the option. But when we go to summarize, there it is. Sometimes it doesn't just pop up by itself. You have to go back into it. So it does seem to be a little bit buggy, at least at this point, but I would expect this to be fixed by the time it's released to the public on the lock screen. Many people have wanted to change their icons for the flashlight and camera for years. And of course with iOS 18, you can do that press and hold, then go to customize. If we go to customize lock screen, we have our different icons icons. Not only can you change them, but you can completely delete them. Just tap the minus button, tap done, and they go away entirely. Now you'll have no shortcuts on the home screen. So you can delete them entirely, or you can customize them with even opening an app. So because this gives you full access to a bunch of different shortcuts, along with the shortcuts app, you can actually specify to open an app with this shortcut and then select the app you want it to open. So if I want to use a shortcut, maybe to open the Apple store, I could do that, then tap on it. And we have the option to open the Apple store. Now, if we tap done, 
will just open it right up. So if we want to open that, it goes right into the Apple store as you would expect. So some really nice customization there with the lock screen. But again, if you want to customize and delete them entirely, you can do that. If I go into the weather widget or the weather app, it can not only tell me what my home location is, but also my work location if I have that set in settings. So if you have a work location set up within your maps and you have home and then also work, if you go into your settings, then you go down to your apps, then go all the way to the bottom where we have weather. Within weather, we now have an option for home and work. It says allow weather to access your home and work addresses from contacts, requires location services. So if you have all of those things enabled based on the time of day when you leave for work and more, you'll actually see your work forecast for where you work, and also your home forecast when you're headed home. If we go into messages and you're talking to someone using iMessage, so you have the blue bubbles, you can now send a message later. You can schedule it to send a little bit later by pressing the plus button on the left, scrolling down, and then going to send later. We now have the option to send, so we'll just say hello, and you'll see tomorrow, 9 a.m. Tap on the time, and then we have the little option here where we can set this out a couple weeks if we want, or wherever we'd like. So I could schedule this out until September 17th, but it jumps back because it only lets you do it for a couple weeks. Even though the message option is here, it jumps back. But you can schedule it out a couple weeks here, so we'll select this time, and then we'll send. So you'll see it says send later, and we now have the option to edit. So if we tap on edit again, we can either delete the message, send the message now, or edit the time. So we can edit the time here, it pops up here as well, and then we're good to go. So you have some options here if you want to send messages later finally, as I know that's something many people have wanted. Another feature worth trying out is if you're using Wi-Fi, maybe in your home, someone comes to visit and they want to connect to your Wi-Fi network easily, but you don't actually have a way to send that to them easily if they're not using an iPhone, go over into your passwords app, unlock it, and within passwords, you'll see Wi-Fi. If you have saved Wi-Fi passwords, you can easily share these. So you'll see a bunch of them that I've already connected to. If I go to Aaron's iPhone 10 here, you'll see we can show a network QR code. So if we connect this way, it'll pop up a QR code and allow them to connect. This is just a much easier way to share that overall network with them. And speaking of Wi-Fi, if you want to keep it more secure at your home, go into your settings, go to Wi-Fi, under Wi-Fi, tap the little I next to your Wi-Fi network. Within your Wi-Fi network, not only will you see your auto join options, password, and low data mode, but below that, you now have a new option to rotate your Wi-Fi address. It will rotate the address regularly, making it harder to track your device specifically, since each device has its own specified address. So that's something I would recommend turning on to keep your device even more secure. Within Notes, they've made some significant improvements here as well. If we go into Notes, you'll see I have a new note, very simple like this, but if you're working on a new note, and maybe there's a recent note that you want to jump back to, you can actually do that simply by tapping on the top here and then going to recent notes. Under recent notes, you'll see all of the recent ones. So if I want to jump to new note five, it just jumps right over to that. Again, go to recent notes, jump right back to the one we were at. So it's a really handy way to just jump back and forth between notes. You can also change the font and color of words in notes now. So this is something we had a little bit before where we could change things with marking this up. But if we press and hold maybe on a word here, We'll select it. Once you have your word selected, all you have to do is tap the little AA option here, and then we have a color in the bottom right. Tap on the color, and then you can switch it to whatever you'd like. Blue, we have mint, orange, pink, or purple. Then you can change that in all of your different notes to match something you're working on. We also have the option, finally, to attach a file. Tap the little attachment button, and we can attach a file directly from files, whatever we'd like. Again, under the same attachment menu, we can now record audio. This is something that was a pretty big feature and it also has audio transcription. So I would highly recommend trying this. Maybe you're in a classroom taking notes. This should be available on all iPhones. And now we're recording audio and it should transcribe in real time. So you can save this for later on, take a look at it, follow along as you're speaking back. So this is really great. And then we have some options here just to name the recording. 
tap done, and it's included here along with the transcript. Within photos, whether you like this overall arrangement or not, some people say they love it, some don't, there's actually some nice features here. In my photos, if I scroll to the bottom, you'll see that I have something called wallpaper suggestions. It actually looks through my photos, suggests different wallpapers or different photos it thinks will make great wallpaper. If you don't see this, scroll to the bottom, tap on customize, scroll down again, and turn on wallpaper suggestions. Once you do that, it will start giving giving you suggestions of wallpapers based on your photos that it thinks will look great on your lock screen and home screen. If I go to my next page, we have the new calculator app and there's a couple things worth noting here. Tap the three dot menu in the upper left, press and hold on any one of the different equations or things you've solved before. And now you can copy the expression, copy the result or delete it altogether. Then you can paste it elsewhere, whether that's notes or somewhere else. So if I want to copy the expression, go over into notes, press and hold, We'll paste here and we have the expression there. If we type equals, it will actually solve that for us. So equals, and now we have the sum or the result there as well. If we go back in here, we of course have different calculators we can switch between. And another thing you can do is not only use the calculator here, but you can use this pretty much anywhere throughout your different notes apps, even in messages. So if we go down here and say six plus 12, and then just put the equal sign. It will auto sum that or solve that. Just press space and it solves it and leaves that there for you. So it's a super easy way to keep track of different things. Maybe do some math quickly while you need to go back in. And then of course you can copy and paste out of all of your different things you've looked at before. So it's great that you just have some nice little features that we probably should have had for years. Now, a new feature I find to be very helpful is if you're in the car and maybe you find that you get motion sickness a lot, there's a new setting to help with that. And it seems to help quite a bit within your settings, go to accessibility, then go to motion and within motion, you'll see that we have vehicle motion cues. I would highly recommend turning this on and then it will automatically turn on when it's in a vehicle sensing the actual motion. It puts little dots on the screen and they move based on how you're moving. So with the motion sensor, you'll see that they show up here. And as I move my phone around, they actually move. So based on acceleration, if I accelerate fast, they'll start scrolling down the screen and it turns on and off automatically as needed. So it's really great. Let you know if it's active or inactive and really helps when you're just using your phone altogether. You might find it to be distracting at first, but it gives you a sense of motion and definitely helps with motion sickness, at least in my experience so far. Another thing we've wanted for a long time that I would highly recommend if you weren't aware of it already is go into the phone app, tap on keypad and start typing the number and it will bring up your different contacts or things that relate. T9 dialing is finally here on the iPhone and you can see it here as I started to type 1-800. Another really helpful feature in phone is if we go to recents, Within recents, we can now search. You can search by voice or just search in general and find all of your recents or even missed calls as well. If we go into the control center, you may have already noticed we have a power button. Now, if you tap on it, it doesn't do anything, but if you press and hold on the power button in the upper right, you can now slide to power off back in the control center. You may have already noticed. I only have one page of controls. Now this is fully customizable now, but it starts off with multiple pages. If you just want to get back to simplified control centers or even have less than this, you can remove most of these different apps or options here. But if you want to add a different page, just maybe add an alarm, then maybe add a larger control here. It creates another page. If we just tap on this, now we have two pages. If we press and hold, then delete this control, tap again, it goes back to one page. So if you delete the controls on the other pages, it gets back to that simplified control center with whatever you select for yourself. So that's something many people weren't aware you could do. So I think this is great. I don't want multiple pages of controls, but if you do, you can create them. If you don't, just leave it alone. If you have a phone with the dynamic Island, Apple has updated the flashlight and you may have already seen this, but I have it set to my action button on my iPhone 15 pro max. We can now adjust the beam strength as well as the beam width. And we've got a really nice animation here. So again, up and down, you may have already seen this, but it's such a nice animation. I thought I'd point it out anyway.
And so that's everything as far as 18 plus tips and features to try with iOS 18. Lots of really helpful things, lots of hidden things throughout, and there's much more to talk about. Let me know your favorite feature in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.